I want to ask you this. Uh, as a friend, or it could be also a friend, right? Different roles, different paths. I want to ask you this. What, as a friend, or as a person, or as a son, <laughs> what are promises that you normally make to someone? What are some promises that you normally make to someone and have a tendency of not fulfilling it? Or not, or not having, having the tendency of not doing or fulfilling your promise to that, to that someone, right? So, what are those? Think of that. I know it's it's not a difficult question, so this is not a it's not a test. So what are some promises? Basic like or or somebody invited you to a party, would you say, Oh yes, I will go. Okay. Is that and then you eventually you know something else end up not attending or not going? Or is it something as a as a parent, like somebody would ask you, like your I mean your son, your daughter would ask you uh, mom, can we go to on the weekend? Can we go to? Can we buy boba? Can we buy boba for me? And then event, and you promised that, and eventually you did not do it. Are, are, as a parent, have you experienced that? Yes. yes or no? Okay, yes. All right. So, okay. And then, or have you have you mentioned this as a son or daughter? Have you experienced this? You promised your parent, like your mom, mom that I promise. I will be home by this time. Oh, you have uh, have mentioned, and then you end up not doing it. Raise up your hand. Okay, just make sure I'll allow you to go. Okay, just make sure you'll be home by maybe 9 p.m. We're just gonna hang out with our friends, and then, and then you receive a text message on the 9:30. Where are you? Right, so something like that. So it's, those are some small or big promises that you have promised to that person and then eventually not do it, right? So maybe in some case, like you promised, you, Mom, I promised this. I'm going to clean my room, okay? I promise this year I will clean the home. You have mentioned that to your mom. <laughs> or this I promise I'm going to clean my spouse's car this year, I promise. <laughs> or you would tell your son or daughter, like, Make sure you think about it today. <laughs> and then, oh yes, I promise I'll do it. Okay, and then three days after, it has to be fulfilled. <laughs> Alright, so you promise to do your homework. You promise to do the project, that you, to do the work that you're supposed to do. And you end up procrastinating. How many of you have experienced that? Alright, so a lot of us, right? Who among you here have promised to themselves like, okay, I promise I'm gonna go on a diet this year. Who? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cut down on the chips, on the other sweet portals, and then you end up not doing it, right? So cut down on online shopping, have you promised that person? End up not doing it. Those are, the, why do we do that? Why do we, ex the question is, there are some promises that we make to ourselves, to somebody, and then you end up not doing it, right? So, what are those? So, why am I asking this? This is actually, of course, connected to what I will share with you guys today. We're going to talk about the life of Jephthah, part two. Okay, so, we are actually in our week 16 of Faithful God. See, so many appreciate them, our book study. 16 weeks, right? So, I'm just amazed at God's faithfulness towards His people. Like um, time and time again, we have seen the disobedience of the God of God's people, and yet He has still, time and time again, He would rescue His people, right? So, actually, this is our last Sunday of our Faithful God series. And next Sunday, what's next Sunday? Oh, okay, <laughs> our, where are we going to meet? Victory Park. Okay, Victory Park. And we don't own Victory Park, just so you know, like what Apple mentioned. It's just a name <laughs> that was given to that park. It just happened to be our church name as well, right? So, of course, and of course, so when we come back in November, we will resume next, uh, we, will resume, we will start with a new series called Kingdom Wealth. I'm excited with this. And of course, as I mentioned last Sunday, we discussed about one of the judges in Jephthah. I say Jephthah. Yeah. And you know the name of the last name of Jephthah? It wasn't mentioned. So, 
not Bautista. So I was studying, he's not Bautista. All right, so we saw the Israelites. After 300 plus years, they still fall into a cycle of sin. And God had to raise, God had raised up Jephthah, right? The cycle of sin, Israel falls into sin, Israel in bondage, Israel cries out to God, and then God raised up judges, and now we are in Jephthah. Next year, it's going to be, we will continue the book, our book study, right? So I'm excited for this one. So there's still a lot to unpack, but for now, we are ending this this is uh, Sunday, right? So, so the Lord's faithfulness towards His people was shown as He raised up another judge in Jephthah. Jephthah's past, as for those of you who has forgotten, uh, Jephthah's past didn't let his faith de define him. Uh, as despite of his, uh, his past, him being the son of a prostitute, being an outcast, he was driven away, the Lord still used him to help the people of Israel against the Ammonites. And so, Last Sunday's lesson was about Jephthah's life. That regardless of your story, God can still use you for His glory. Remember that? So it's really encouraging. It doesn't matter like what happened to you in the past, right? But God looks at it. God can say that even if you're the least, if you feel like you're the least person that God can use, He can still use you. Right? Despite, despite of your difficult past, right? And of course, your past can be changed, but God can change you. You just have to accept that. So as knowing that, accepting that Jephthah's like God still use him, we're going to unpack this second part of Jephthah, right? So today, we're moving on with our message. And let's look at our text this afternoon. When Jephthah, verse 34, when Jephthah returned to his home in Mizpah, who should come out to meet him, but his daughter dancing to the sound of timbrels. And so she was an only child. Except for her, he had neither son nor daughter. So okay, verse 35. When he saw her, he tore his, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh no, my daughter, you have brought me down and I am devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. Right, so verse 36, my father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord, do to me just as you promised, now that the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the Ammonites. Verse 37, but grant me this one request, she said, give me, give me two months to roam the hills and weep with my friends because I will never marry. Right, join me in worship. Father, thank you, Lord, for this afternoon, for gathering here, us here as a spiritual family. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, illumine your word as we study it this afternoon. May you speak to our hearts, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what's happening here? What happened, right? So last time we, we discussed about Jephthah being, you know, he was, you can see here in verse 29, the spirit of the Lord. So the The context here says, The Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah, right? He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah and Gilead. From there, he advanced against the Ammonites. So this is what happened. So, he now he is about to lead, take charge uh, against the Ammonites. And then the Spirit of the Lord came to Jephthah and advanced towards the Ammonites. So, Holy, the Holy Spirit empowered Jephthah. He's the source of Jephthah's courage. And then the feeling of the Holy Spirit led to Jephthah advancing. It's now about, about to attack. And we can see here in verse 30, and Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, right? If you give the Ammonites into my hands, right after verse 29, what happened? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Right? So the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And then verse 30, so he's about to attack. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, about to attack, and then he said this, right? Jephthah made a vow, if you give the Ammonites into my hands. So let me ask first, let, I'm going to share with you what is a vow, right? So a vow is a solemn promise made to God. It is a solemn promise made to God to perform or to abstain from performing a certain thing. So why is this important? Because a promise or a vow is a pledge actually to take action. It's an assurance that will definitely happen. So when 
Jephthah made this vow to the Lord. He's like, okay, I will do this for you. Right? So, what's, what is that? So, there's nothing inherently wrong. Is it wrong as I was studying? Is it wrong? Or is it right to make a vow to God? There's nothing wrong or sinful about making a promise. Actually, in fact, in the Old Testament, the Bible records a great number of promises, even God. Right? He made a covenant himself to his people, right? And even in the Old Testament, the books of Leviticus and Numbers, you can see that there's uh, several references to vows in relation to offsprings and sacrifices. This was a common thing during their time. That they would make a, a vow. So there are actually consequences. The degree of making a vow is actually quite high if you do not fulfill it. It could be punishable by death. That you make a vow to the Lord and then if you don't fulfill it, you will die. Yeah, the, the, the cost could be dead, right? So Jephthah's vow to God was a commitment of faith to Him. Right? So a vow to the Lord was a form of devotion and allegiance to Him. So that's what happens. He's about to attack and then he said, Lord, I'm making this vow to you. So what's the vow? Right, so let's see. This is what he said. Whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me, right, when I return in triumph from the Ammonites, will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a what? As a burnt offering. So what is that? I'm going to read it again. Whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me. So after, if you will give me victory, if you will grant this to me, Whatever comes out of the door, when I get home, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me, when I return in triumph from the Ammonites, will be the Lord's. This will be yours. And I will sacrifice it as a what? As a burnt offering. So he's, he, does, he doesn't know yet. There's no social media. There's no phone. Remember? Oh, it's just right. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Right? So this is what he made. This is the vow that he made to the Lord. Uh, like what I mentioned, it is customary actually in their culture when someone returns from battle, somebody will will greet the person, right? Of course, there would be dancing, there would be people would be celebrating. Of course, people will greet you after a battle. If you win, people, your family, your their entire town will celebrate that because you have become victorious, and then people will come out to greet you, right? So. So if you see this, of course, you may, you may have an idea now because we mentioned we read the earlier verse, right? So, okay, so I just want to say this. Human sacrifice was strictly forbidden by the Mosaic law. In passages such as Leviticus 18.21 and De Deuteronomy 12.31. So it's almost certain that Jephthah, actually, when you read the earlier passage, Jephthah was familiar with passages uh, because when he negotiated with the Ammonites, he was very diplomatic. He he knew w about uh, what happened to them in the past. You know, even he was uh, he wanted to the, the Israelites wanted to cross. He was to to not to attack, but to they they were diplomatic about crossing the not attacking the, their own time, right? So so he demonstrated that, and he knew God's word. So as we move on, we can see here in verse thirty-two to thirty-three. Then Jephthah went over to fight the Ammonites. So he made a vow to, to the Lord. He went over to fight the Ammonites. Right? So, and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated how many? 20 towns from error to the vicinity of Midian, as far as Abel Karamim. Thus Israel subdued Ammon. So this means he defeated them. So this is what this text so after making that vow, it doesn't mention, it, the author didn't mention how long. It could be, uh, it could be uh, longer than the, it's like, it's not like in one day they conquered 20 towns right away. No, it could be a long battle, but regardless, the Lord gave him the victory. So, you can see here. So despite Jephthah's difficult paths, the fam remember the family rejection, God still used him. So, and the Lord won the victory for Israel through who? Through Jephthah, right? So it didn't mention, right? But the Lord still gave him the victory. So the Lord fulfilled his promise and Jephthah made the vow to the Lord. That's what happened. In verse 34, you know, as we can read here, 
She was an only child except for he had neither son nor daughter. So after Jephthah's victory, Jephthah went back to his home. Her, and lo and behold, her only child was the first one to greet her. Remember the vow? I just mentioned earlier. This is the first person who greeted her. Knowing that he had made a vow to the Lord, he was devastated. Of course, he'd be devastated. You can see here, I have made a vow. When he saw her, he tore his clothes. I don't know what was he wearing, not a uh, Ferragamo or something. You know, ah, I just, he just cried. No, oh, no. So, why you? Oh, no, my daughter. He was like, oh, no, why you? It could be somebody else, the neighbor. But why you? <laughs> why? Yes. Why you? So, that's like, I am devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. Right? So, this is hard, right? So, a man full of faith, a man who, as you can see, as, he, as we read all the, the chapter 11, right? All throughout, he was consistent, he was faithful, and he made this, right? So, verse 36, the daughter said, My father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Look at the response of the daughter. The only daughter, the only child, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promised, now that the Lord has avenged you. Look at that conversation, the weight of that. Would you, would you do that? Because maybe it could be, if it's just me, I would just, oh no, Lord, I could have replaced the vow. Maybe, let me, and if whoever I will see, that person will... I will be sacrificed. Like, not my daughter, just kill me, right? As a prayer. But then, no, the vow that he made to the Lord said, whoever it is, he, he, will, uh, he will offer, do it as a serve, as a burnt offering. Verse 37, I'm going to be quick about this. This message is actually just giving you a context of what it is so that you would understand what's happening. So, but grant me this one request. Give me two months to roam the hills and be with my friends because I'll never marry. Of course. This was a child, remember, just like the dog, she was young, and she was like, let me be with my, my pen, and I'll be with them, you know, my crew, and because I will never marry, of course. Of course, you may go, the, uh, this is what happened, you may go, and he let her go for two months. Let her go for two months. Go, go, and we, she and her friends went to the hills, and wept because she would never marry. She went to the hills, the mountains. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, overlooking. <laughs> so after two months, she returned to her father. He did to her. He had bowed, and she was a virgin. So look at that promise. Like, she, from this comes the Israelite tradition, which is that each year, the young women of Israel would go out four days, for four days to commemorate the daughter of Jephthah, the king had died. So it was come up, it was come memory, right? So what happened here? So it wasn't actually not a tradition. It could have been like it during the time of Jeff, Jephthah's daughter, they would do, they were doing this, but after that, that generation, they didn't continue. But during that time, they would be, they would, the women of Israel would go out for four days to commemorate, right? So there are actually two viewpoints. The school of thoughts that they say about Jephthah's vow. So not, it's like, first is that he literally killed and sacrificed her daughter. Right? So this is what he did. Like, okay, that's the first school of thought because it was very clear. Because if you read the, the, the scripture, that's what it said, literally, right? So second is that he didn't sacrifice her, so, but offered her to the Lord. What, did, what do I mean by that? Much like, you know, Hannah to Samuel. Like they offered her to the Lord as to serve in service. He would never marry, but he would serve God all throughout the days of her life. As she served God all throughout her days, she never married, devoted her time to serve God. That's why the author stated that she remained a virgin. She remained a virgin, and being the only child, Jephthah's lineage was stopped. So she's the only daughter. So the great Jephthah's lineage stopped because of their obedience. Right? So, so I would say I would stand on this second viewpoint. 
And as it was mentioned, actually, you can see, it was, his name was mentioned in Hebrews 11, 32 to 33. Right? And what more should that be? What more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and who? Jephthah. Right now, uh, he, these people are in the Hall of Fame. That he couldn't have, Jephthah could have been included in this list if he performed, he literally like killed his daughter. Right? So, Jephthah was included alongside David and Samuel. Now, I believe that he couldn't have been included that if he would do that. Right? So, just like the Canaanites have sacrificed their children to their gods. So, regard this, his lineage stopped. So, so, that's what happened. Throughout the story of the author and judges, Jephthah has remained consistent about his faithfulness to the Lord. So, and he was knowledgeable about God's commands. Therefore, so I would say, I would consider that this viewpoint is he still sacrificed, but he did not literally kill his daughter. But the sacrifice of what? The end of his lineage. So, so that was still heavy, right? So from that. So that said, there are lessons that we can learn here, right? So what is the lesson, right? What's the lesson about Jephthah making about to God? Number one. Vows must be made with the right attitude. Vows must be made with the right attitude. It says here, right? So, and Jephthah made a vow. This is going to be quick, but it's a long context to give us an understanding of what we are. Uh, this we will be discussing. So, Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. Right? Jephthah's character is shown here about his devotion and allegiance to God, as I have mentioned earlier. Right, so he didn't make a vow because of a form of transaction. He made a vow because he loved God. That if the Lord will give him victory, he will give the Lord an offering. Because all throughout, he has recognized, I was an outcast. I was, uh, you know, uh, my brothers didn't want me. Right, so, and then God redeemed him. So because maybe before the battle, he was like, Okay, Lord, thank you for using me. And because of my love and devotion to you, I will give you an offering. I will make a vow. Because he knew, he knew God's character, right? So it is a form of devotion and faithfulness to him. Therefore, it is by faith that enabled him to make a vow. Such an amazing vow. So is it wrong? The question is, is it wrong to make a vow? Is it wrong? Is it necessary? You know, Jephthah made the vow to the Lord out of his love for him. Right? So it's not wrong. Although, personally, I think Jephthah doesn't need to make a vow to give him victory. As I was studying this, verse 29 and verse 30, even verse 30, when he made the vow, verse 30, he could have skipped this one and just jump straight to verse 32 and just, you know, attack the enemies. If God didn't ask this he didn't ask this, right? So, as earlier judges, Othniel, remember Othniel, Ehud, Deborah, Shamgar, remember those? Those people, they didn't make a vow to the Lord, but God still helped them to be victorious, right? So, but Jephthah, out of his love and devotion to God, he made this vow with the right attitude. He had this right heart, like, Lord, I want to do this because of my love and the allegiance to you. So question is, as you pause right now, have you made vows to God? Or why do you make a vow to God in the first place? What are those vows? Lord, Lord if you will give me this, if you give me this house, I will do this for you. If you heal me, I will do this for you. If you do this, if you give me a spouse, I will do this for you. Right, so, I will sacrifice my spouse. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Is that what you If God will do this for you, then you will sacrifice something in the baby. Right? Of course, it's like, as if your prayer or petition to God will be more powerful if you make a vow to God. If you view God as making a vow to Him as a form of transaction, as a transactional thing, 
Like you wanted to, you pray this, you make a vow, Lord, if you will do this. What if God doesn't need that? But you view Him as a transactional thing. That you need, you need to add something. I will vow, my vow to you, Lord. If you do this, then I will do this. Is this how you view the Lord? Is this the type of relationship that you have with God? It's transactional. Or do you view God? Do you view your Lord? It's like you want to make this vow because you simply love Him. Lord, I want to do this because of my allegiance to you. Thank you, God. Just like Jenna, I want to do this because of my love and devotion for you. Thank you for I am so blessed. I want to make this vow. Have you made this? As I reflect, I'm like, I think I have. Let me repent. So, so anyway, vows must be made with the right attitude. Second, another lesson we can learn about Jephthah's vow is that vows must not be made recklessly. Read it. Vows must not be made recklessly. And so, where did I uh, got this? Of course. Oh, sorry. Did I press something? Um, can you click for me? The slide uh, was. I think there's an internet connection uh, problem. But it's still in the screen. Um, verse 34 35. So she was an only child except for her, and he had neither no son. It was reckless, right? So Jeff, Jeff actually made a rash vow. It was like, it's uh, not necessarily. But he still made a, a rash vow. So, he did not consider the consequences of the vow. This actually cost me. Right? So therefore, he was grieved when his daughter was first to greet him out of his house. Jephthah didn't think this through. He's like, okay, I'm just, I'll make this vow because I love you. But of course, he doesn't need to do it. He will never have an option to continue his lineage. You know, maybe he was thinking, it could be a dog who would greet me. I'm just, it's okay, you know. Maybe Yanni. Oh no. No? No! Oh sorry, no. I'm sorry, I repent. It's not that dog. So no sir, he could like what I said, maybe I, I was thinking when I was studying this, he could have been like, Oh, for sure my daughter is not here. It's not that we're going be maybe she's in the mountains, wandering off. She likes going to the mountains anyway. So like, let me go to the mountains. That's what she said. But no, it has happened, right? So, so reckless vow. So, have you made a rash vow? Right, so, let me ask you, have you made a rash vow? Sometimes when you are placed in a difficult situation, when you feel like you don't have control over a situation, when you are helpless, that's when you make a rash vow. It's like, Lord, I will do this. You do this. I'll make this vow. It could be out of uncertainty, that you don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, uncertainty about the future, about your relationships, about your marriage, about some financial decisions that you need to make. Now you make a rash vow. Marital decisions, you will end up making rash vows. It's like, what are those? As you pause and hear this, what are those rash vows that just like, so easy for you to make a vow, right? Sometimes the Lord is asking something from you. It may not be through a form of a vow, right? Perhaps God only wants one area of your life. You know what? You know what, my son, my daughter, you don't need to make a vow. I just, this is what I want from you. This one area, this area of obedience. I just need you to obey on this area. But no, you end up doing, committing so many vows. Why? You're because of a rash vow. You do not need to do it, right? So obey Him rather than you make a vow to God. This is sweet. Another lesson we can learn about Jephthah's vow to God. Lastly, can you click? I cannot. Uh, word number three. Vows should be honored and fulfilled. Vows should be honored and fulfilled. It says there, verse 35 and 36. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. 
And so you have given your word to the Lord, he says. You know, in the CEV version, it says here, vow is a sacred promise. It is a sacred promise that you made to the Lord. Maybe physically, he's not here. Right? That's why it's easy for you to make a vow to God. You don't see him, or you don't hear him all the things. It's easy for you to say words. Words are just words for you. But words are powerful, right? So, although, let me go. All right, so Jephthah, though it was devastating for him, who made the rash vow, the end of his lineage, he still decided to fulfill his sacred promise to the Lord. Look at that love and passion for God, right? So it was difficult, but he knew that he needed to honor the Lord. He needed to keep his promise to God, regardless. You know, the wisest king that lived, King Solomon, wrote this about making a vow. In Ecclesiastes 5.5, could you press that for me, please? I don't know who's in this. Can you read it? It is better not to make a vow to make one and not fulfill it. So, it seems easy to make a sacred promise to God when you're in need. Like what I mentioned. When you need a provision, in need of restoration, in need of healing. It's like, oh, sorry, I'm not breaking God's vow. Right? So, When was the last time you made a vow? Or have you forgotten that you made a vow to God? Remember the time when you were single and you were praying for a spouse and now God answered it after so many years? And how is it now? Are you taking care of your spouse? Do you, or are you fulfilling your vow to Him? Or just neglecting Him or her? Are you irritated now? When you see your spouse, like, stop, stop, don't don't hear me. Or are you serving your spouse? Because as you serve your spouse, you also serve the Lord. Are you fulfilling your vow? Are you honoring your vow to Him? Remember the time when you were praying for a baby? God answered that. Do you still see them as a blessing? Yeah. Are you fulfilling your vow? Or do you see them as something else? Are you fulfilling your vow? Are you honoring your vow to me? Remember when, the time when you were praying for church community? For so long you've been wandering off, jumping from different different Netflix <laughs> thing at home, not going to church for you. The Lord answered it. And now you're complaining, oh, it's hard to be part of the spiritual family. Oh, it's hard. They keep on asking me to attend the victory group. Oh, they keep on telling me to go to this building fund campaign. <laughs> asking me, reminding me to be faithful to Him. What's that? There are too far, so many excuses. Are you fulfilling your vow to Him? Are you honoring Him? Just like Jephthah. Fulfilling, completing it. Have you mentioned, have you heard this word? Quoting like, Lord, if you give me this house, I will use this for the advancement of your kingdom. I will invite people. How is that now? Are you fulfilling your vow? If you will grant me this apartment, Lord, this two-bedroom, three-bedroom apartment, I will invite 30 people in my house, <laughs> engaging them. Then the landlord will call. <laughs> you get a notice of eviction. <laughs> Lord, if you give me a car, Lord, I will have a way to go to church. I'll have a means. If you grant me this driver's license along with the, with the car, <laughs> right? So I have a bet. If you give me give me this, God. I have more people to bring to church. It sounds nice in the beginning, and then when God granted that thing to you, where are you? How's the other end? Lord, if I have a better work schedule, picture this, God. Monday to Friday, work. Saturday, Sunday, devoted to you, Lord. Once a month. 
We are only here. <laughs> Nowhere to be seen. No, I'm not, I'm not condemning. I love you guys. Right? So, are you fulfilling your vow? Lord, if you give me this promotion to get this additional job, there will be an increase. You, 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 know, you pray to God, oh, and you hear, oh, love to have a conversation with the Lord. Lord, if you give me this, right? So this, this is for you, actually. If you give me this promotion, if you give this, like, there will be a building fund campaign for me to share. It's like, God, if you give this, Lord, if you heal me, and there's a testimony that I could share. I will have more time for you, Lord. I want you, the Lord, to use me. Now that the Lord wants to use you, you know where to be found. How's your vow to Him? Have you made a vow to the Lord? How many times you have made a vow to Him and not fulfilled it? Different reasons. It's convenient to make a vow when it's convenient. Now, it's, now when it's inconvenient for you, you don't fulfill it anymore. Lord, I promise, I will, I will give my tithes, I will give this offering, if you give me this job. It's like all your life you want it set already. All areas, give this to me. This is the vow. Answer this. Make the vow. Answer this. No. And then, Lord, give me friends. I don't have friends here in America. God gave you a godly friend. He offended you. He corrected you. Now you're nowhere to be found. Your victory group leader keeps on reminding you how much he loves you. He or she loves you. It's like, Lord, give me a sincere friend. God gave you that. He corrected you. He reminded you. I don't like this. Victory. I'm going to jump to a victory group. I'm a different victory group leader. I use victory group leader in God. <laughs> Maybe they were cool. My son told them their victory group is cool. <laughs> wow. What about what about us, Bonnie? <laughs> the old guys. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So Jephthah knows God. I am Jephthah knows God's character, and he has reverential fear of God. That's why he made this that vow. My heart's desire said, "For we will have that reverential fear of God. If we make a vow to Him that we will." We would fulfill that and we would honor our God. Jephthah's love for the Lord was expressed to him in fulfilling his vow. May we have that character of Jephthah who would still fulfill his vow to God. So join me in a word of faith. Father, thank you Lord for this afternoon reminding us, God, not to neglect, not to forget about the vow to honor our vow to Him, to you, Lord. Yes, I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters, as you're hearing this message. I'll take this time. As you're hearing the message, you like you were reminded about you making a, I don't know what it is. It could be a small or big vow to God, but God reminded you. Holy Spirit reminded you. Remember my son, my daughter? You made that vow to me. How is it now? That is you. And you want to ask for forgiveness as a sign of humility. Would you raise up your hand so I can pray for you? Amen. Five seconds. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Thank you, God, for their encounter with you. Lord, thank you, Lord, for their heart making that vow to you. I don't know what it is. It could be a vow in different areas in their lives. Lord, as they come in humility to repent, Lord God, it could be they did not fulfill it and they're still hesitating. Lord, give them the, the boldness to fulfill your vow, God. Give them, thank you, God, for their humility and acknowledging this, Lord. Lord, I pray that you could completely help them, Lord. But down your hands. Next, I want to pray prayer blessing. Like you know in your heart as you're doing, that 
you have made a vow to the Lord. And God made a promise for you. And you're still waiting for your promise. And you are just faithful to Him. If you have been faithful to Him and made that vow to Him, even though it was difficult, and yet you pushed through, you just need His guidance. Would you raise up your hand? So I can pray for you. Amen. God, thank you for my brothers and sisters who have acknowledged her. Thank you for their faithfulness, God, in their lives. Thank you for using them, God, for the advancement of your kingdom. They made this sacred promise to you, Lord, to be used by you, to serve you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would continue to work in their lives, to, to enjoy this moment as they continue to be faithful to you, God. Put down your hands. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.